Live a little and take Ooh. grandma to Denny's for a cheat meal breakfast every once in a while. She'll love you for it and you'll probably get a better body as a result. It makes sense. We always want to have our cheat meal in the evening time because we want to be able to have cake. We want to have a dessert. We want to have a cheat dinner. We want to have a date night. But I'm encouraging you to have a cheat meal breakfast instead. Okay, it's a different change of pace, but the science and the physiology is actually in our favor when it comes down to body composition to have our cheats in the morning. So I've got six reasons for you. Here's the first one. After today's video, I put a discount link for Sunday's dog food. Now, Sunday's is a human grade pet food. This is cool. I've got three dogs. At one point, I had four. So we're big dog people, and I know that a lot of people that watch this channel care about their dogs, sometimes even more than they care about themselves. So when you have a human grade dog food, that means that you could literally eat it yourself. That's how high the quality is. So I popped that link down below. It was started by a veterinarian, really interesting stuff where she was really interested in just changing how we treated our dogs. Like why do we give our dogs secondhand food? Like they're part of our family this day and age. Why don't we treat them how we want to be treated? So we're talking really, good, really, really good quality ingredients. If you look at the label, it's like all really good stuff. We've got the meat, you've got the sweet potato, straight up real food. So anyway, that link down below will save you a few bucks. Highly recommend that you check them out. You literally will store less, and that is a genetic fact. See, there's a study that was published in the journal BMC Medical Genomics, and I've referenced this study before. Okay, it demonstrated that our fuel accumulation genes are lower in the morning. What that means is we have less gene expression of the genes that are associated with us storing our fuel, like carbohydrates and fat, in the morning. And as the day goes on, we get more expression of those fuel accumulation genes, meaning we are more likely to store the food or the excess food that we eat as fat in the afternoon than we are in the morning. So having more calories or at least more fat in the morning, you can usually get away with it a little bit better. We also start the day with highly insulin sensitive muscles and highly insulin resistant fat cells. What that means is the extra carbohydrates that we take in in the morning are much more likely to go into the muscle as muscle glycogen. That means that our fat cells being more insulin resistant in the morning are a little bit more resistant. They're just like you think fat would be. They're lazy and they don't get up in the morning, right? The fat cells are like, oh, I'm still groggy. I don't want to store anything yet. Don't come to my house. But the muscles are like, heck yeah, come on in carbs. Let's go. Okay. The second reason that you want to be doing your cheat meal in the morning is flat out. It's more opportunity to burn it throughout the course of the day. Okay, we have our cheat meals in the evening time. Come on, it's kind of a like a no-brainer. If we had the bolus of calories coming in in the morning, we have the rest of the day to burn it off. And I'm not talking about acting like some maniac that's going to go try to like literally burn off your breakfast like through a workout. I'm talking about just living your life. Like if you have a big cheat meal breakfast, you might feel bogged down, but at least the rest of the day you will be a little bit more active. At least you go to the store and you burn a couple calories compared to just going to bed, right? So that's just kind of a big low-hanging fruit one. The other one, the next one is another low-hanging fruit one. You get to experience different foods. I will tell you when I have my cheat meals in the evening time, I end up like doing the same kind of thing. It's like, okay, pizza, tacos, like we rotate through the same like four or five cheat meals and like never get anything new. But if you start going to breakfast and doing that as your cheat meal, you get to embrace that for something different, like the fried chicken and waffles, or maybe some pancakes, or maybe some syrup, maybe some things you wouldn't normally have. Maybe a you know, big old fried egg and a T-bone steak, whatever, right? Something different or some good greasy pork sausage along with some hash brown. Like, I don't know, I'm making myself hungry, so I'm gonna keep rattling them off. The fourth reason is it aligns with your environmental cues. So there are other studies that demonstrate when we have calories in the evening, it actually attributes to more weight gain even if the calories are the same. Watch this. There was a study that was published in the journal Current Biology. It was published in October of 2020, relatively new. Okay, it took a look at two groups. Okay, both groups ate the same exact amount of calories. Okay, one group ate between the hours of 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. The other group ate between the hours of 12 p.m. and 11 p.m. They ate the exact foods, the exact same calories, everything was the same, even the meal spacing was the same. The only difference was when they ate. Okay, well, the group that ate in the earlier window that had most of their calories allocated earlier in the day had significantly better weight, significantly better overall insulin resistance, significantly better energy, and to top it all off, significantly better resting energy expenditure, which means they were burning more calories at rest. Okay, 
What that tells us is most of our calories are designed to be allocated into the morning time and at least into the afternoon. Once the sun goes down, we're not supposed to be having a bunch of calories because the environmental cues are telling us we're supposed to be asleep or we're supposed to be winding down. So if you're going to have a cheat meal, it's a huge disruption to those environmental cues and a huge disruption to our circadian rhythm. So then it messes up the sleep, you're not getting a good sleep, and you're not able to process the food that you're actually consuming. Consuming it in the morning allows you to store less of it, allows you to burn it, and allows your body to establish a circadian rhythm that's gonna get you back into a healthy balance quicker. The next part is it keeps you satiated throughout the course of the day. You see, if you start your day eating like a bird because you're leading up to a cheat meal, guess what? You're gonna overindulge on that cheat meal and you're gonna go way more overboard than you thought you would, okay? So here's what happens. Just like most people in at least America, we eat these like, pigeon little breakfasts and these cruddy little lunches and then we all stack our calories to the end of the day when we get home and raid the pantry, right? Okay, you know it's true, we all do it. Okay, that's not the right way. But if we stack our calories towards the earlier part of the day and we have a lot of fats because we're having maybe some pastries or maybe we're having, you're going to be a little bit more satiated. Sure, you're gonna have a blood sugar rise and crash if you're having a bunch of sugar, but for the most part, if you're getting some good good greasy fats in there with the breakfast foods that are typically pretty greasy and oily, then you're gonna stay a little bit more satiated. It's just something to factor in. I know for me, after I have a cheat meal, I don't wanna look at food for a little while. It's just the way it is. I'm like, I'm done, I'm satisfied, and that's how it rolls, right? Okay, makes a big difference. The next one is one that I really personally like. Okay, I work out in the morning. Okay, so it makes it so that when I have my cheat meal breakfast, it gives me almost a full 24 hours for my blood glucose levels and my insulin levels to stabilize. So that means when I'm working out the next day, I'm not just burning out a pool of glucose that is in my bloodstream. I've stabilized by now and I'm back to burning fat. If you were to work out like within 12 hours after a cheat meal, a lot of what you're burning is still left over from the actual meal itself. So you're having to burn through all that food first before you ever get to any actual benefit for body composition. Whereas if I have my cheat meal in the morning, I have 24 hours from my blood sugar levels to stabilize, my insulin levels to come back low, and then when I do work out, I'm right smack dab back to burning fat again during my workout. It just makes sense, and it doesn't mean you have to do it all the time, but live a little bit and do something different. Go take grandma to Denny's and have a grand slam for crying out loud. See you tomorrow.